What's up, Transit? How are you feeling this morning? Awesome, awesome. Hey, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Kevin, and I am super excited to be here with y'all this morning. Uh, if it's your very first time here in Transit with us, we're so glad that you chose to spend Sunday morning with us. We hope that you have an awesome Sunday morning, an awesome experience, that you feel like this is a place that you are welcome and that you belong, and we hope that you come back and see us again really, really soon here in Transit. Uh, and I'm excited to be here with you today because um, as a whole church today, um, we are launching uh, something. Anybody know what is going on across our church today? Be rich. be rich. That's right. I heard a bunch of you say it out there. Be Rich is starting today. And so today in transit is going to look a little bit different. Obviously, you can tell that already a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation about what Be Rich is all about and how we get to partner with that as an environment, as middle schoolers uh, in this church. How do we get to partner with uh, Be Rich? Um, and so uh, if you've been going to our church for a while, you maybe have heard of Be Rich before. Maybe you're new or you've come over the last year and so you have no idea what it is. Maybe you saw some of the signs or banners. You've heard them talking about it as we got close to it. Um, but I want to just talk to you a little bit about, first of all, what is Be Rich? Um, because it's a big uh, thing that our church is doing right now and we're really doing it over the next few months. We're going to be talking about it um, in different ways. Um, Be Rich is simply this. It's just a church-wide generosity campaign um, where we encourage everyone in our church to be generous in helping us support organizations in our community and around the world. Um, so it's really just a chance for us to try to be generous and to give back to people in our community and all over the world. And so along with Be Rich, whenever you see stuff about Be Rich or you hear people talk about Be Rich, you're going to see and hear three very specific words, and that is give, serve, and love. And the idea there is that if, as we give of the resources that we have available to us, and as we serve the people around us, then through that we get a chance and an opportunity to show God's love to people in our community and around the world. And people that, they, they, we don't know what they may think about God, but we want them to know that no matter how they feel or think about God, that God loves them. And this is a chance that we get to show that to those people. Another question you might be asking yourself when it comes to Be Rich, maybe you've heard it a few times and you've always wondered, why is it called Be Rich? Like, it's, it's not about getting rich, it's not about anything like that, so why would we call it that? And so we actually get that from a verse in the Bible. There's a, a time when Paul is writing a letter to Timothy, and y'all have heard us talk about Paul and Timothy if you've been around transit for any length of time. We talk about him, about both of them quite a bit. Timothy was a student of Paul's, and at one point, Timothy went out on his own to begin um, building and leading churches and leading people um, to get to know Jesus on his own. And while he was out on his own, Paul would write him these letters of encouragement and support and instruction. And during one of those letters, Paul is writing to Timothy and he's telling him how to lead the group of people that he's leading at the church he's at at the time. And here's what he says in 1 Timothy 6.18. He says, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and be generous and willing to share. So that's where this idea of be rich comes from, is that we, as followers of Jesus, if you would put yourself in that category and say, yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus, we are actually commanded to be rich in good deeds, that we're to be generous and willing to share with what we have. And for some of us, that's a lot. We have been given a lot, and we're called to be generous with a lot. And for some people, that is not very much, but we all have something that we have that we are able to be generous with, and share. And so as we think about Be Rich, and we're coming into our 18th year of having Be Rich, another question that I want to answer for y'all is what exactly has Be Rich done? Like what has Be Rich done over the years? And so here are some things that I think are really interesting that Be Rich has done. Um, we've had $90.8 million donated over the last 17 years. Um, if you're trying to kind of get a grasp of exactly how much that is, uh, if you bought the $79.99 gift card, you could buy 18 billion V-Bucks with that. And I, you would never run out of V-Bucks. Um, you could uh, buy that. And if, if we have the same type of support this year that we've had over the last few years, in our 18th year this year, as Be Rich kind of becomes an adult, we will cross the $100 million mark. Uh, and what's really cool about that money is that it doesn't just come from here at Brownsbridge or even from all of our uh, network churches with North Point and Gwinnett and Woodstock. Actually, 133 different churches have participated in Be Rich over the 17 years that we've had it. So really, and that continues to grow year after year. And so it is really a nationwide and global campaign that we get an opportunity 
to be a part of. And so it's really exciting. And, and with that money that's come from all of those different churches, we have been able to support over 2,200 separate projects that have been funded with that money. And, and these are some incredible projects right here in our community and projects all over the world. We have projects that are happening in Costa Rica and Uganda and down in Mexico. And we have projects all over the place and coming for Scythe County and Fulton County and all over Georgia as well. Some of those projects, you know, you may have heard of. Some of them are things like housing for orphans. Some of it is rehoming and job training for homeless. Some of it you guys maybe have participated in before where we collect food to donate to food banks or we get backpacks, school supplies, and school snacks to give to the school system for students who are in need and need those supplies and their families can't afford them right now. And so there's all kinds of really cool projects, and I could tell you about it, but I want to do, want to do something better than that. I want to show you just a little highlight video that shows some of our people and some of the money that we have raised for this put into action. So check out the screens here. Jesus unleashed an entirely different ethic, and it changed communities, it changed lives. And our prayer is that our generosity this year through Be Rich would do the same thing in our communities and in the process, possibly do something in each one of us. For the next few weeks, we're gonna give and serve and love in Jesus' name. And Be Rich is our opportunity to remind our communities that everybody matters to God, whether God matters to them or not. Thank you, Be Rich! 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 So that's just a really cool picture of just some of the things uh, and the people that Be Rich has impacted. And one of the things that I love about it, I didn't mention earlier, is that um, when it comes to Be Rich, this giving campaign that we do, 100%, every single penny that is put forth into Be Rich goes out into the community. None of it is used to facilitate. All of that comes from our own budgets, and we give every single penny out to the community and to the world through those different projects that people are involved in. And so as we talk about Be Rich, and as you guys walk around the halls, and for the next few months, you'll see stuff all around Brownsbridge and, um, that has to do with Be Rich, and your small group will be talking about some stuff. A question might come up for you in middle school of like, hey, why does this matter to me? Like, you're in middle school right now. Maybe you would think, like, I don't really have that many resources. I don't have any money. I don't have much. So why does it matter to me? And the truth is, when, when we think about your generation of students, and there, there's something that I happen to know about your generation of students, and, and trust me, I understand whenever an older person gets up and is like, yeah, I know all about your generation, and comes across kind of like a boomer a little bit, but there's something that there's been a lot of research done that we know about your generation, and that is that you want to change the world. That when, when people study your generation and they ask you guys questions, you look around the world and you see things that you don't like about the world and about our country and about um, maybe your schools or things like that. And you're like, there's a better way to do this. And you think you have thoughts of how you want to change the world, but you're not sure how to do it yet. You're not sure how to go about it yet, but there's things that you want to change. And, and a lot of times all of us can get caught up in this idea that, you know, maybe we just think we're too young or we don't have, you know, maybe when I have a family later in life or when I have a job and a career and I have money, I can, then I can do something to make a difference. Or when I become famous and I've got millions of followers, then I can really have an influence on a lot of people. And, and that is this trap that we get caught in. And, and this is true of all generations that we think like in order to make a change in the world, in order for me to make an impact, it's got to be something big. It's got to be this grand, so, so maybe one day when I'm able to do that, then I can really make a difference. But the truth is that change rarely happens like that. Change rarely happens from these big things. The way that real change happens is one person at a time. Real change happens one person at a time, one community at a time. It's the way that you impact the people around you in your family, in your small group, in your schools, on your teams. And as you impact them in a positive way, they go out and continue to impact other people. And there was a way that Jesus taught about this. And with the way that Jesus said it, as he's talking to his followers and he's teaching them and he's telling them what he wants to be like in the world, he says this. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Which is, if you think about it, 
maybe you've heard this verse a ton of times, but if you really think about it, it is a weird thing to say that you are salt. Uh, and if we think about it, I wanted to see, figure out like, hey, what, what is salt really used for? And what was it used for back in Jesus' time? And so there's two things that salt really is used for. Is the, the main one is that it enhances the flavor of food. Obviously used in the right amounts, it enhances the flavor of the food that you eat or that you cook or that you prepare. The other thing that it does, and this one would have had a really big impact, especially more so back in Jesus' day, is that it preserves food, extending its life and its usefulness. I mean, back when Jesus was alive and when he was saying this and his followers were listening, they would have known the value that salt had. They would have known how important salt was because they didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have places they could store food in order to save it for a long time and keep it at the right temperature. So they used salt to preserve these foods to make them last a long time so they could survive. And so salt was this really, really important thing, and yet it was so small, and it's so inexpensive, but it was so vital to life. And this is what Jesus looked at his followers and said, I want you to be salt to the earth. I want you to be the salt of the earth. And and I know that if I ask myself these questions, and maybe if you ask yourself these questions, I'm not sure what the answers would be. If you ask yourself, like, hey... Would people in my life describe me as salt to their life? Would people in my life say that I enhance the flavor of their life, that having me around in their life makes their life better, that they're happier, that they're more encouraged because I'm around? Would people say that I preserve their life? Would people say that would people say that you preserve their life? Would they say that you help carry their burdens when they're struggling, that you support and encourage and lift them up during hard times? And would they look at you and say, man, you really are salt to my life? Now, I know your friends wouldn't actually say it like that. But if we think about it, that's the way that Jesus wanted us to be. He wanted us to be salt to the people around us. And he knew that if we could just do that, it's this little small thing. It's this little inexpensive thing. It doesn't take a lot from us to do, just like salt. And yet, you can still change the world because you can change the world simply by making the world around you better. And a lot of times we like to downplay that and think it's not that big of a deal and it's just small. And, but when everybody goes forward with that mindset, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make my world a little bit better. I'm going to make sure my friends are a little bit more encouraged. I'm going to make sure my family feels supported from me and that I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I'm going to make sure my team feels encouraged and uplifted from my presence. And if everybody does that, that can change the world. And so just because you're in middle school, it doesn't mean you don't have anything to give and anything to do when it comes to be rich and supporting our community and supporting people around the world. And so you're going to go to small group in just a few minutes, and you're going to get a chance to talk about what you can do personally in your own life to live that out. But also, I want to talk for a minute about what we are going to do as a whole, as transit. And so as you think about Be Rich on a bigger scale, of like all the projects and all the things they do, you may be wondering, like, what can I do to help? What can I do to help with Be Rich? What can I do? What can I give? I don't really have any money. I don't really have anything. What we are going to do is every single small group in transit is going to do an outing later this year around the idea of shopping for a place called Holiday House. And some of you maybe have already done this. If you're in 7th and 8th grade, maybe you've done this in years past with transit. Holiday House is this incredible thing that's put on by the Place of Forsyth. And the Place of Forsyth is an organization that does amazing work in our community in supporting people who are struggling. And Holiday House looks at people who are struggling with that and they realize that people like that, as it comes close to the holidays, they they cannot afford to get their kids presents or to, to give Christmas to their children because maybe somebody's lost a job in their family or maybe there's a sickness in the family that's keeping them from working or that's costing a ton of money for them. Maybe they're just going through some really hard times. But whatever reason, they may look at this season and be like, I don't know what I'm gonna do for Christmas. And so the Place of Forsyth gathers new presents from all over, people that are donating, and they put this store together that people in that situation can come in and get Christmas presents for their kids. And so every transit small group is going to do an outing around shopping for this holiday house sometime in November or early December as we get ready for Christmas. And what I want to challenge you guys with, 
I want to challenge you to when you think about that outing, as you go talk about what do you want to do for that and where do you want to go and uh, all of those things, that you don't think about it as an idea of like, I'm going to ask my parents to give 20 bucks or I'm going to ask my parents to give $50 or $10 or whatever it may be. We've got about two months until those are going to start happening. And I want you to be thinking about what can you do to earn some money to give to this holiday house project? What can you do to save up or to, to raise some money in order to give? And because you're going to get a chance to talk about in small group how important it is that this is something that comes from you. That it's not just mom and dad gave me some money, here you go, let's go buy some presents. That you, the reward that you will get from putting in the work, earning that money, and then being willing to be generous with it for other people. So as you head to small group, and I want you to be thinking about this question, you're going to start your time in small group with this, is what is something that I can do over the next two months to raise my own money for our small group's Be Rich outing? And you guys can get brainstorm around that and some other things regarding the outing and, and, and be rich. And we're going to go ahead and close in prayer and I'll send you to small group. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for everybody in this room. Thank you for this church and for the people who years and years ago came up with the idea of be rich. And just for all of the ways that has impacted our community and the world around us. Thank you so much that we get to be a part of something like this. God, we know that you could, you could solve all of these problems on your own and you choose to use people like us to lean into the lives of people around us to help. And I pray for these students, they head to small group and have conversations around this. They would realize that they can change the world by just making the world around them better. I pray that you bring everybody back here safely next week and it's your name we pray, amen.